The live stream will be starting soon. The live stream will be starting soon. The live stream will be starting in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Sam and Rachel here with The Blind Life. Hello, everybody. Hello. Yes. So today we are doing our, uh, as always, our monthly talk back with The Blind Life. Uh, sometimes live stream, sometimes not. Uh, but this is also St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patty's Day to everyone out there. And happy St. Patty's Day to you, Rachel. Hey, you too. <laughs> Are you wearing green? I, I didn't even think about that. Um, I mean, I guess there's a small amount of green on my shirt, but it was not purposeful. Okay. I actually learned recently that they say you should really wear blue because apparently St. Patrick, the actual St. Patrick, that was his color, blue. But anyway. <laughs> I'm, not doing, I'm not doing that. <laughs> okay. Um, so... Yes. So as you guys know, this is our monthly uh, video podcast, I always call it, where we answer questions from the previous month's videos and chat with everyone who is in the live stream. So if you guys are in, hello, welcome. Do we have anybody in yet, Rachel? Do you know? Yeah, we do. Um, Craig Brockmiller was the first one in. He was very excited and he said he's he, this is his first live stream and he can't wait for the supporter Zoom call in April. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you so much. You were first, your first live stream, and you were first. <laughs> and we've got Gammy Rowe here, Joker Alice, uh, Deborah Erickson, Blind Country Records, a bunch of people in here. So awesome. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, if you guys want, let me know what you're doing. If you have any special plans for um, St. Patrick's Day weekend or St. Patrick's Day Sunday, let me know in the chat. But um, Before we dive in, there were a couple people that got their questions in really quickly. You have to go ahead and answer those since they were. Oh my gosh, sure. <laughs> okay. So first, Blind Country Records said, what are your thoughts on the future of the Envision glasses? Um, The future of the Envision glasses. So I think they're, I think they're, they're doing great. Um, they're going in the right direction. So when you think about it, you have to think about the hardware and the software. Kind of think of those separately. Um, I do, at least, anyway. So the software, I think they're, I think they're great. I think they're, they're doing all the right things as far as mm -hmm. I don't really have any major complaints with you know how well it works and the OCR and all of that. I think it works great. Um, they have both online modes and offline modes. Um, online, obviously, you're going to get better results, but it's nice that they offer offline modes. And then, of course, the Ask Envision is is crazy impressive. Um, if you're familiar with that, it's it's Envision's Chat GPT where you can ask super, you know, like very very um, direct questions to the device, and it can give you answers and all that. Um, really, really cool. The hardware they're using Google Glass, and at this point, I mean, it's still it's still really nice and all that, but it's kind of showing its age. Um, it's not the most low profile, I guess you could say. You also can't use any kind of video magnification with Google Glass because, I mean, you can kind of, but the, the lens is so small. The little screen is so small. So if they could find uh, another uh, hardware that is a little bit more updated with, you know, what would be awesome if it had screens that you could utilize video magnification better and still had all the awesome software that they use, I think that would be fantastic. Yeah, and who knows, we're not privy to what their future plans are, so maybe they've got something in the works for that. Yeah, they could, they could. Okay, and then the other question that we'll get to is uh, Craig Brockmiller said, I had asked in, the re in your review of the Apple Vision product about being able to wear glasses with the device. I'm guessing yeah. it is a non-starter, but yes, you can, correct? No. So that is actually one of the things. Stay tuned. That's one of the questions we're going to address um, when we review those comments from that video. I, I, I picked that one out as one to talk about. So stay tuned for that. Okay. All right. Um, so did you have any announcements or anything before we jump into the comments? 
Yeah. So a couple big things coming up. First of all, I've been traveling a ton. I have to apologize for not putting out videos in two weeks, two weeks in a row. Um, just because I was in, I was in Boston for the Stargard summit. Then I was in Baltimore. Then I was in West Texas. Um, I've just been traveling a ton and poor Rachel has been here having to man the, the Ford alone, um, with Willow, of course. Uh, and then I've got, I'm heading out to Los Angeles on Tuesday for CSUN. So big announcements having to do with CSUN Assistive Technology Conference out in Anaheim. I'm going to be there the 19th through the 23rd. Um, the conference exhibit hall, I think, is officially the 19th through the 22nd. Um, I will be, I'm flying out the 23rd, so technically I'm there through the 23rd. But um, I'm going to be in the exhibit hall wandering around. I'm also going to be kind of guest appearing, you could say, at the Irie AT booth in the exhibit hall. Uh, when you walk through the doors of the exhibit hall, that booth, Irie AT, is going to be right in front of you, front and center. And it's uh, spelled Irie, I-R-I-E, <clears throat> excuse me, I-R-I-E hyphen A-T. So Irie AT. Uh, they are wonderful company out of Oregon and um, selling products. I hope I'm right about that. I believe it's Oregon selling products. I've worked with them for years and I'm really excited to be hanging out at the booth with them. I will be there from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. on the 19th. So the entire time that the exhibit hall is open on the 19th. And then I will be there a couple hours each day after that. I don't know exactly the hours. So if you are attending the conference, Swing by the booth if I'm there. Love would love to meet you guys and say hi. Uh, or if I'm not there, chances are I will just be wandering around the exhibit hall somewhere. Um, two exhibit halls. They have two exhibit halls at, at CSUN. Then the other big, big announcement. I'm really excited. If you are attending or if you're just in the Anaheim area, California area, I'm going to be doing a meet and greet uh, Thursday, the 21st from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Marriott in one of their conference rooms. Um, I'm partnering up with the Braille Institute out of California. Very excited to be working with them to do this meet and greet. So we're going to have snacks, food, drinks. Would love to for you guys, if you're going to be in the area, come by, stop by, say hello. Um, learn a little bit about the Braille Institute and all the amazing work they're doing out there in California. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't fully know where it's going to be. It's going to be in one of the conference rooms in the Marriott Convention Center. So it shouldn't be too hard to find. But as soon as I know more information, I will post about it on like my Facebook and Twitter and all that. So excited about that. All righty. Um, one other thing, Sam, before we hop in that you had mentioned, and I don't know if you've got it set up, or not, but Ricky May asked, did you ever do the drawing from the last talk back? <laughs> that is also what we are doing today. Um, Can you go ahead and do that now? Get it, yeah. get that done? And I've already drawn um, I in preparation for the live stream just to save time. I already picked the winners and I did it the same way we always do it uh, through that YouTube comment picker um, website. So I apologize about that. Same same exact reason. I've just been traveling so much. Uh, but if you remember, we were giving away two of the Opta coasters. So the uh, drink coasters that were designed for low vision. And we do have two winners. Um, the first one is, let's see, William Davis 7258. William Davis 7258. And it says the coaster is awesome. Um, it would be nice to be able to find my drink, find a place to put my drink on. So <laughs> William Davis, 7258, congratulations. You are our first winner. Um, just send me an email, sam at theblindlife.net. And let me know your contact information and all of that. And I will send this out to you. And the second winner is, I'm thinking it's Dale. Um, <laughs> yeah. Zoom out, a bit. Zoom out a little bit and I'll try to read it, Sam. Dale Zelazinsk. 
Hold on a second. And the number is 7952. Yeah, I think you got I think that's right. Dale Zelizinsk. Seven... Yeah, D-A-L-E-Z-E-L-E-S-I-N-K. E-S-N-I-K. Uh, yes. Uh, 7952. And Dale says, a heart. Um, I love back, which I think that's supposed to be talk back. I love talk back with you and Sam. So Dale's talking to you, Rachel, not to me. <laughs> Another one of your admirers. Uh, I would love to win a coaster and then smiley face, party popper, all that. So I'm Dale. sure it's addressed to me because I was the one that was really giving the instructions last week on how eh, Possibly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Everybody loves you. I can't I can't complain about that. Um, I'm fond of you as well. <laughs> so, Dale, same thing. Send me an email, sam at theblindlife.net, and I will send this out to you. Just give me your contact information. I'll send it out as soon as I can. Um, so that's it. And stay tuned. We are doing another giveaway later at the end of this live stream. Okay. Let's jump into the first video that we're doing comments on, and then we'll come back and there's more questions in our, and on this video already. So All right, we'll, we'll jump into this. So the, the video was a big one. The first one that we're looking at the comments on, and that was the Apple Vision Pro comprehensive review for the blind and visually impaired. So this was like your finale Apple Vision Pro video. Yeah, this correct? is my big review. Uh, a lot of people seem to enjoy it, and we're appreciative of the video. It's it's got over ten thousand views on it, so that's that's really awesome. Um, yeah, lots of lots of lots of engagement, which is great. Yeah. So since there were so many views, there were also a lot of comments. We have quite a few comments that Sam wanted to respond to. Um, so uh, Laura Malvoyant said, thanks for this review. As someone who has low vision and loves Apple products, I'm glad to have someone in the community give a useful review for our needs. I love the merch, by the way. I just ordered a sweatshirt. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So I just wanted to highlight, I do, we do have merchandise if you guys are interested. <laughs> I, I wear them in some of my videos. I think I'm actually wearing my, yeah, I'm wearing my Blind Life shirt right now underneath my hoodie. Um, As Skylar says, you always wear it. I always, I got to represent. It's a comp, it's a super comfy shirt. That's the reason why I always wear it. Yeah. You do, um, you do wear that particular yeah. one a lot. So if you would, are you interested in any blind life or low vision themed, blindness themed, guide dog themed merchandise, check out my website, theblindlife.net. You can also find a link to my Amazon shop and my uh, spring shop in the video description. All my video descriptions will have a link to those. Um, or you can go to the website and that will take you to the merch as well. Shirts, hoodies, phone cases, all kinds of stuff. All righty. Next comment is from Get Kenneth B. Smith, and he says, most excellent. You answered most of my questions, but what about productivity, content entry, using the keyboard, dictation? Will you be editing videos on your device? And thank you again for helping me live my best blind life. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Ken's a member. A uh, big thank you to Ken for being a member for so many, so many months, uh, years now at this point, probably. Um, so yes, yeah, so I did a little bit of productivity. Now I, I will be honest, I don't have the device, you know, once I was done with my review, I returned it because as you saw in my video, if you saw my review video, it didn't really work well for me. Um, so I, I'm not able to kind of continue to test certain things, but I did use the keyboard. I did have a chance to do that. I did a little bit of productivity. I will not be editing videos. Um, Although I will say, kind of preface by saying that the thing that did work the best and I could really see myself using, one of the only things I could see myself using is connecting it to a Mac and using that giant 75 or so inch Mac screen floating right in front of me. Um, that did work really well and was really cool. But once again, for that kind of money, it wasn't enough to, to for me to keep it. Uh, the keyboard was a little tricky, especially with voiceover. I mean, it works real. It works fine as far as doing the finger pinch to to go um, forwards to find the the key you're looking for, and then doing the other finger pinch to choose it. Um, I did a follow up video, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, using the pointer and the zoom magnifier together. That I did use the keyboard more in that setup, and it worked better. Um, it was easier to use the keyboard, but all in all, the keyboard works. You know, you you can, without any accessibility turned on, you are able to kind of type 
in the, in the air and type on the keyboard. And of course, I wasn't able to do that because I have to use the accessibility. But some people have said it's kind of weird, it's kind of awkward, but it does it does technically work. Okay, that it for that question. Yeah, good. Okay, so the next one was from J Quartz two K two three who said it would be wonderful to have a device like this that say you could wear it and be watching TV or whatever and be able to zoom in to make TV closer to you and be able to read things. Yes. And I, I agree. And that was kind of, that's kind of everybody's thought on this. Um, and that is, was the biggest disappointment. And a lot of questions were surrounding this kind of same topic of zooming in, magnifying something. And from what I could tell, there was no way to magnify anything. I mean, you can you can make your your virtual screens, your virtual windows, you can make those big. And some of them, you can make them really big and you can walk up to them. Um, that is the limit of making these things any kind of magnification. Um, there is no way to zoom in through the camera. There's no way to zoom in through the pass, the pass through. Uh, somebody asked about zooming into movies. And I, I don't know if that, if I flag that as a question we're going to answer today, but um, could you zoom into a movie or zoom into a TV show? No, same thing. You can make it bigger. <clears throat> you can make your screen bigger and you can walk close to it as close as you can before it kind of disappears because you're walking through it. Um, but literally that's it. Uh, so any questions people have about, you know, can you do this? Can you do that with zooming in, zooming in? No, not at all at this time. Okay. Um, next is from Mad Doug Fitness or MA Doug Fitness. I'm not sure which it is. Have you tried using one of the binocular apps? Would it be possible to load a binocular app that you can find in the Apple store and have a window open with it magnifying what the camera is looking at? Thanks for posting this video and all this work you did for this video. Yeah. So, well, I, you know, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> but no, and that kind of goes back to it. I think the main problem, because I also did in the video, I, I put on the Be My Eyes app and somebody asked that too, you know, can you use Be My Eyes? Um, to those kind of questions, I would, I would strongly urge you to watch the whole video. <laughs> um, but the Be My Eyes, it would not, even though it asks if if it could use the camera, you know, I had to give permission for it to use the camera. It still didn't work. And I think that's because Apple hasn't opened up the API um, uh, for the camera to these third party app developers. So same thing with this one. Um, you could probably install a binocular app, but I doubt the you would see anything through that or probably just be a black screen like the Be My Eyes was because they don't they haven't allowed camera access to these apps yet. Um, but once again, I'm sure they will. Eventually they will. They just haven't done it yet. Okay. And the next question is Craig's question. Um, it says, great content question. I am, and I don't know this word, I'm sorry, a fake kick. And wear the old school Coke bottle glasses. Would no. you think I would be able to wear my glasses with this device, or is it pretty much a non-starter for glasses based on how the head strap looks? Thanks for your content. I've been looking for this type of thing forever. Yes. So no, you cannot wear glasses with this. Glasses of any kind. Um, it is designed, and that's why they they offer the <clears throat> excuse me they they offer the prescription lens inserts because that reason alone you cannot wear glasses um the when you do the dpi um or pdi pupillary distance interval um where the lenses move side to side and that you can't do that if you were wearing glasses uh they're just it's just way too close to your eyes so whether you're if you do wear coke bottle glasses whether they would have your prescription or not that's that's a good question uh, if you go to the apple stores they have a machine there that will scan your glasses and try to determine your prescription and that would be a good way to find out if they have it um, i think you can do it through the website as well like if you were going to go through the process of ordering the apple vision pro you can put in your prescription information and they will tell you if that's available or not. Okay, and, and he actually, just in the chat here, he said, I have no lenses in my eyes. My script is plus 11.25 diopters. That 
I would be surprised if that's available, but who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe they're more inclusive than I would think, but that's, that's a, a pretty hefty prescription. <clears throat> And actually on that note, um, so I was just talking with a company that makes prescription inserts for the um, uh, Quest, MetaQuest 3. And so you you can maybe check that. They were talking, they were talking with me about um, inserts for Apple Vision. So apparently there are third-party companies that can make inserts as well. So you might have better luck with one of those. Okay. Next question is from MPLS Jeff M. So my first time watching content on your channel, I heard about it from Apple Vision, a couple of non-tech questions. As a person with low vision, how do you keep your head shaved? I have wanted to do this, but I've always thought I could not do it independently with my vision loss. Related question, how do you keep your beard shaved up? <laughs> yes, this is, this is a popular question, actually. <laughs> it is, and that's why I po that's why I added it in here. Um, so shaving the head is is super easy. Uh, you just do it by by touch. You know, I I shave it so close that I can tell where I've shaved and where I haven't shaved. Um, so I just it's kind of like cutting the grass or sweeping the the kitchen floor. You just kind of start from one end and work your way to the other, <laughs> and just make sure you get it all. Um, and then I also, just, keep, just keep feeling it as you go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I do it. Um, it's kind of strange, but I do it in the middle of our, our bathroom and I'm kind of leaned over. i it's, it's funny. I'm down on my hands and knees shaving my head. <laughs> uh, I always feel weird when someone walks in, I'm like, do you mind? Um, but that someone is generally just me <laughs> Yeah, or the dog or something, You're but not um, in public, public restrooms or anything <laughs> <laughs> at an airport bathroom. Um, but that way, you know, everything just goes on the floor and then I can use a little broom to sweep it all up. Um, I can kind of keep track of everything that way. Now, the face is a completely different story altogether. Um, I can do underneath my neck and just it's the same thing. I can feel where the, the hair is long and where it's not. And I can kind of do my best to clean that up. Everything else, though, I have to go to a barber. Um I just can't do it myself. And I actually went to the barber yesterday or Friday. Um, just, you know, because I wish I could, I wish I could just trim it up in the mirror, but I cannot. Now, if this, if I was shaving completely sh um, short, you know, or whatever, clean shaven, same thing, just do it by feel. Okay. Um, Andrew Howard 9077 says, how to zoom in a movie and, I'm sorry. Well, that's the, this time. Yeah, that's the question. I, I, I couldn't remember if it was in here or not. Um, you, we do not. You cannot zoom in to, to, to pretty much anything other than just making those windows as big as they can go. Past that, there is no zooming in right now. Okay. Um, Karen Mann 298 said, 298 said, Sam, have you ever done a segment on tabletop games and other non-electric playables? I used to play tabletop games with my friends, but it's hard to find one now. So actually, I'm sorry, um, real quick, back to that previous comment question. Um, now, I should clarify, you can do the the zoom magnifier. So the just the zooming in, making text bigger and that sort of thing. And I did... My follow-up video to this one is all about using the zoom magnifier, and that does zoom in windows. Um, so I was just thinking of, he's, he mentioned FaceTime and that sort of thing. You could zoom into FaceTime and make that bigger and, and zoom in that way, but um, it only works windows. It doesn't work in like pass-through or in the camera, that sort of thing. Although I don't know if I ever tried it on the camera, but... That would be the only way at, right now to zoom in to anything is using that. Just to clarify that. Um, then the tabletop games. I've never done like specifically, I have done videos talking about gaming. I've talked about how I use uh, a device like the Iris Vision Live or the Patriot Viewpoint and how those work really well for me for, for tabletop gaming. Uh, we play Scrabble every now and then, and I will pull out the headset, and it lets me zoom in on 
my tiles and my little tray and I can zoom in on the board and kind of scan around and, and find where I want to put stuff. You do have to be careful though, because since it is just a single camera, um, you don't have any true depth perception. So putting your tiles down on the board is a little tricky. You just have to be kind of slow and, and careful with that. Um, but other than that, it, it works pretty well. Uh, we played some Uno last night. The kids were in town and we played some Uno and I got out my large uh, portable lamp. Um, it's the Stella Go, which I've done a video about. And I had that on the table and I was able to see my cards a lot better using that that lighting. Yeah, so, and we um, have gone through the, the yellow cards are are really hard for Sam to read. So we've gone through with a Sharpie and marked all the yellow card, the number on all of the yellow cards so he could see them. Yeah, yeah. And one of the packs, I don't it wasn't the one we were using last night, also has a I think we put a little a little dot in the upper left corner of all the green cards or the blue cards, one of those two, because green blue are hard for me to determine uh, distinguish each other apart. And so we did that. We just marked all the one color with a little dot in the upper left corner, just so I, I would know. Okay, that's a green one. Okay. Um, Mark Media 8252 said, what about people with one eye? Is it going to work for them? Yes. So this was a question. A lot of people had this question. And um, yes, I, I talk about it in my video. I forget which one, if it was the settings video, or the setup video, but you are able to turn off one eye um, if you want to. So if you only have vision in one eye, you can just use that one eye. Okay. And the last one from this video, I'm not even going to try to read the name. I'm sorry to use your name, but it says you use only Apple devices in your daily life. And that's a big no. You no. use all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, Apple is like the least of my devices. Um, Other than a phone, you do use an Apple phone. Yeah, I've got my iPhone. I use. I also use a Samsung phone. Um, I My main computer system is Windows, although I do have a Mac as well. Um, I have an iPad, but I also have a Samsung tablet. So I, I've got, I, I, I use everything um, just because basically what I do, I have to be able to know how to use all these different things. So um, that's really the only reason I have all these things is is pretty much for work. Yeah. And, uh, and honestly, I mean, like the tablets and stuff, you don't even use those very often. No, no. Somebody was asking me this in a comment the other day. I, I use my iPad to watch movies and videos and stuff on airplanes uh, with audio description turned on. And then I use it for training. That's that's really the most I use it for. I use it for when I'm giving a, giving a presentation so I can follow along with my PowerPoint. Um, but for the most of the time, I use it at work when I'm working with clients, training voiceover. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, let's let me go back and look at some of the questions that are in the chat here of this video. Um, sure. Before we start on the next comment set of comments. Um, so Bevan Weber said, is there somewhere that a person can download JAWS for free? My assumption is no on that. Not for free. I'm, well, I, I don't know if they have like a 30 day trial. Um, you could try that. You could check it out. You can go to the website, but no, it's, it's, it's either a subscription based. Um, I don't know if they're still doing the one-time purchase. You can buy it uh, as a standalone. You can get it with zoom text. Um, you can get it. I mean, but you can get it for free if you go through Voke Rehab and you need it for work or for um, school. Then chances are you can get it for free that way. Yeah, you, depending on what state you're in, probably. Depending on what state you are, yeah, yeah. You can also go through like Computers for the Blind, um, which sells refurbished used computers at really highly discounted pricing. Um, they will oftentimes include JAWS, you know, if you need it, they can, they can put that on the, the computer and have it ready to go for you. You know, it's, it's, it is an extra price and you're buying for the, buying the computer, but that's another way to get it. Okay. And blind and vision impaired YouTubers ask, will you be doing a video on the new update for Orcan Maya? Yes. Yeah. Um, I will. Um, and, uh, sometime, sometime coming out sometime soon. Okay. 
And then Craig Rockmiller gave a donation, which was super generous. And oh. just said, that's great info about the third party providers for inserts. I struggle with shaping my beard as well. And then he also said, next time you're in Boston, let him know he wasn't able to make the starter conference. Ah, yeah. Well, thank you. I, I'll actually be up there sometime soon for another event, I think in April. So, well, thank yeah. you for the information, Craig. Um, and Mike Wheeler joined in and he's got two years as a member. Yes. And Mike, you missed it. I, I did. I did. I announced the winner for last last month's uh, giveaway. Mike's the one that always has to remind me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, he takes his job seriously and we appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let me scroll through, make sure there's nothing that I missed. Um, Ty Rocky did mention that there's a lot of good braille card games and board games for blind people and that one of their favorite uh, braille games is Uno. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. If you go to, you know, on Amazon and you just put accessible games or um, low vision games or blind games, something like that, you know, you can find there's a lot. Tactile games. OK, so the next video that we are going to look at the comments on was the pen fen the. I find this word so difficult to say. Pen friend. Pen friend. Three voice labeling system. Is it the goat? <laughs> is that what so I put on there? <laughs> first, first question is: Is it the goat? Is it the goat? I mean, it is. It is. I don't know about goat. Um, it is definitely uh, old school and very, very beloved in the community. Um, so that's pretty good. Okay, um, so Tracy Treblecock said, I work for an independent living center. We just got a grant to buy AT items as part of a lending library so that we can show our consumers things that can allow them to live independently. I will be stalking your page quite a bit because I fell in love with the tactile icons for house use. And now this, OMG, I'm in heaven. <laughs> Which I would say, Tracy, if you see this and you can comment on it to let us know what part of the world you're in. People are always looking for those types of services. Um, I mean, don't there's not enough of them. Do you agree, Sam, that where you can go and like see devices and try things out and, and stuff like that? So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's always good for Sam to have an idea of where places like that are. So if someone's asking that's in the area, you know, he can yeah. do something. But. Yeah, it's um, and to her point, you know, and, and a lot of people in the comments were saying that they already owned like version one or version two and, and how they love it. Um, I didn't see anybody saying this is stupid. Um, you know, well, I mean, one person kind of mentioned that it's it's just a glorified NFC reader. Um, and it is. And, and, you know, but like I said, it's it's been around for a long time and a lot of people love it. Um, on that note, Deborah Erickson7852 said, Sam, you always do such a beautiful job explaining all the aspects of the technology you share. I love my pen friend and I actually have two of them. One is in my kitchen and I use it for the many spices and spice blends I have. The other is to help me keep my earrings organized that I use for my videos as I have several hundreds of pairs of those. Love this tool. Yeah. And it just kind of goes to the point of, you know, can can you can you do this with other devices? Yes. I mean, I've I've done a video showing how to use an Android phone with some inexpensive NFC tags to get essentially the same thing. Um, I've shown how to do it with an iPhone too, uh, DIY, you know, smart labels or label creating. Um, so yes, you can do it with that. But sometimes a device that was made just for it and is easy to use and you know it's it's not bulky and you got to open an app and all this stuff it just makes it a much more enjoyable uh experience and so yes is it expensive i mean all assistive technology is expensive but sometimes a little bit of of 
ease of use and, and comfort and, and less frustrations is worth it. Yeah. Um, Beth Ann 9892 said, I was gifted a pen friend, not the third version, obviously, and I absolutely love it. I've labeled many things and it makes me so much more independent. I doubt I would use all the extra new features of the pen friend three, so I'm perfectly happy with what I have. Yeah, and I would kind of echo that point. So the Pinfin 3, if you watched the video um, or didn't watch the video, it, it adds in some extra things like MP3 player. You can put in, um, you know, you can load audiobooks to it. You can load music onto it, things like that. And I, mean, I don't know, that seems a little, it's not really what it's for. It, it kind of seems like they're just trying to add stuff to, you know, increase the marketability of it maybe. Um, I would kind of agree that if you're looking to get one of these, maybe look at a version two or version one and, and save some money. Okay. Um, Booker950 said, I'm so happy I found your channel. I'm a little less frightened about my rapidly diminishing vision. At this point, like you, I have no central vision and the glaucoma is worsening. So... But I am now getting comfortable with the assistive technology thanks to you and this channel. This tech looks like a winner, and I think I'll be getting one very soon. I do love my audiobooks and music, so I'm curious. Is the pen friend Bluetooth capable, or should I just stick with my phone? Which kind of goes to what you were just talking about. Yes, and, and this was another question that several people wanted to know. And no, there is no Bluetooth on the pen friend. Uh, it is very simple. Um, you plug it up to a computer. You transfer all your files over to it. And then you can listen to it with or without headphones, but not Bluetooth. It's just regular plug-in headphones. Okay. And actually, Stacy V just commented in the chat here and said, Hi, I'd never heard of the pen friend before your video, and I got one, and I already love it. I did my spices, and I'm getting ready to do my clothes to know the colors. I find it easier than using my phone, which I think yeah. that's the point of the pen friend is just it's, it's the ease of use, right? Ease of use, yes, yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's super easy to record the, the tag. It's super easy to scan the tag. It's, it's, the tags are reusable. Um, there's lots of different tags that are available, stickers and magnets and clips and things like that. So yeah, yeah, it's good. And, um, yeah, one of the other things you had tagged here was just someone asking about it being so expensive, which I think you've already kind of touched mm -hmm. on. And Ty had a comment here in the chat that I think, answers to that says the pin friend is pretty expensive but cheap for assistive technology most assistive <laughs> technology is thousands of dollars and I, I agree yeah it's all relative um but i do want to kind of reiterate that if if you if you want if you're interested in a diy um, alternative i do have those two videos on how to do uh, nfc labeling with an android phone and with an iphone um so you can you know buy a couple cheap NFC tags and, and get essentially the same thing. Okay. Um, that was it for that video. So I'm going to hop back over to our chat here. Um, Craig Brockmiller said, along with PenFriend, do you know of any inventory programs that can that you could use to scan foods in and out of your fridge or cupboards? Uh, inventory, not really. So we... In our family, we use the Our Groceries app, Our Groceries, O-U-R Groceries, um, and we love it. And it's it's kind of, it could be kind of used, I guess, to do, take inventory. But the best part about it, which I've done a whole video about this um, as well, um, is that you can utilize the Amazon Echo or the Google digital assistant, Google Home Hub or Google Nest Hub, whatever they're called these days. Um, so the reason why that's so awesome is, well, it's an app also that, you know, you put on your phone and like Rachel has it on her phone. I have it on my phone, the Our Groceries app, and they're linked. So if I put something on the grocery list or the Christmas list or the, you know, must have list or whatever, if I put it on my app, it instantly shows up on her app as well. And then they integrate with your digital assistants, your personal speakers, um, assistant speakers. So oftentimes, we do it almost every day. We're standing in the kitchen. Rachel just did this last night, uh, or maybe it was this morning. She said, A lady, open our groceries and add sour cream. 
And then the A lady, I'm not going to say her name because she's always listening, but she <laughs> said, um, added sour cream to grocery list. And when she does that, it instantly shows up in our apps. So now we can just go to the grocery store. We have all of those things already on there. Um, if Rachel's at the grocery store and I all of a sudden I'm like, oh, crap, I need coffee. I can quickly add it to my app and it instantly shows up on hers. So that's a super powerful application. It's free. They do have a pro version, but we don't have the pro version. And um, I think we actually do now, but I think I mainly did it because I just think it's I wanted to give them money because it's oh, okay. a, it's so useful. I don't know. I can't think of what we use it for. And I, you can, when you're creating your list, you can read barcodes with that mm -hmm. as well. We just don't really utilize it that way, but, but you could. I think, I think the pro version also lets you save a picture um, associated with the item. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which so that can be helpful. We don't use either. I mean, honestly, I don't go to the grocery store and actually go inside the store very often. We almost always just order online and then I go and pick it up. But it's yeah. nice because then because when I go onto the um we use Kroger, when I go onto the Kroger website to place my order, I just open the app up and I've got my list right there and I just put things on. I I love our groceries. It works so well for our family. Yeah, it's one of those apps that we found it years and years ago, and it's like, this is the best app. Please and don't ever go lives. away. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Okay. Um, some other comments in here. Um, when we were talking about the independent living place and then lending out things, um, Ricky May said that our provincial library lends out these types of devices if they have them, which is oh, very nice. cool. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I don't, I doubt that most of the libraries around us have them, but right. that is pretty cool. And Sam, that makes me wonder if, that's something that, like, if BCB has an influx, like, you know, every once in a while you guys end up with a lot of, like, older CCTVs. I wonder if that's something that the library, the, the county library system would be interested in. Yeah, I should check it out. We we often reach out to independent living facilities and say, hey, would you guys mm -hmm. like that? We have extras. Would you want to put one in, like, your little community room for your residents to use? And we've done that before. Um, so but that, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me look here through the rest of these. Oh, Sean Techno, I think, um, joined us a little bit later and said, Hey, Sam, I saw that you're going to be at CSUN. I'll, I'll see you there. I can't wait to go to the sessions as this is my first time. Awesome. Um, yeah. And if you missed the very beginning of the video, Sean, Sam talked about where exactly he's going to be. So you might want to, once we're done with the live stream, go back. It, it's very at the very beginning of the video. He was yeah. talking about some announcements and he talked about where you'd be able to find him on which days. And I'm and I'm doing a meet and greet. So definitely, yeah, go back and watch the beginning of this video. Um, Joker Alice was asking about the pen friend. And I don't know, Sam may not know the answer to this, but maybe someone else in the chat will. Um, but about the pen friend, if you use the tags to label clothes, are they strong enough to withstand being washed in the washer? I know they do have waterproof tags, um, but that's all I know. Yeah. So if anybody who is a longtime user has any more information, that'd be great. Okay. We'll hop over to the next video that we're going to look at the comments on. And this is the video that you talked about earlier. It's the follow-up Apple Vision Pro. It's about the pointer with zoom magnification. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Gail Mansowitz 6165 said, love the cat. <laughs> what cat was that? So that's, that's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's very funny. I started using, so anytime I do like a little, um, where I have to jump in and correct a mistake or, or I always say editing Sam here, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, I've started, I, I figured we need something to look at. People would want something to look at. So I, I've started, I put in a cat just sitting there on a table <laughs> and, and everybody's loving the cat. So I, um, I had it in this one and someone else later on, I don't think I included it in, in this, these comments, but someone said, you know, what's the cat's name? Maybe I did. Um, but uh, uh, we're officially, so the cat looks a lot like one of our old cat named Oscar. So that's going to be Oscar from now <laughs> on. Oscar, the cat, he's going to be the, uh, um, my, my alternate, I guess is what, the person asked. So cat will be here to stay. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
L-U-K-U-S-P-1 said, assuming this is a no because it's a different OS, but I'm wondering if you could install Be My Eyes or Ira. Also opens up some interesting options. So yes, so once again, you can install them. Um, check out the full review video because I do put Be My Eyes on there and, and show you how that works. Um, so that you, you, you are able to install some of those apps. Some of them are not available. But once again, um, you can't, pretty much can't use them because you can't access the cameras through the apps. Okay. Um, that was it for that video. That, that was fairly short. Yeah. Um, if you haven't seen that one, definitely check it out. That one only has like 2,000, 3,000 views. So not a lot of people have seen it. Um, it's, it's really... I, you know, it's, it's an alternative way to use alternate way to use the, the vision pro, uh, using magnification and the virtual pointer. Um, and it might work better for a lot of people. It's, I didn't really focus too much on it in the first video, the original, like the full review video, but, um, it might be a better way for some people to use it. Okay. Um, we have, Basil Matthew Thomas said, hi, my name is Basil Matthew Thomas and I am from India. I'm suffering from partial blindness and low vision and your videos are quite relatable to my life. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and Ricky May said, I'm not sure if it's a unique thing to our library, but you can borrow just about anything if they have it. A lot of people borrow things like snowshoes or power tools. That's crazy. Wow. That's really cool. I've worked in like, tool lending libraries before, like that a neighborhood will set up to where they have like they kind of pool in on buying tools and stuff, especially tools that you wouldn't use very often, like a tile cutter or something. And then you yeah. can check them out. It's a great um, idea. Was it, did you say it was Ricky? Where, where's Ricky living? I'm curious. Yeah. Ricky may, where do you live? I, I feel like maybe you said something earlier in the. Yeah. Snowshoes. It's gotta be cold, right? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Let it snow. Um, okay. Deborah Caldbeck said two years in with pen friend and laundry tags are still fine after washing. They say the tags will last for a hundred washings okay. Oh, okay. I mean, for most pieces of clothing. That's, that's a lot of washings. That's a couple of years, probably I'm curious. You that thing all the time. Yeah. I'm curious where you put the tags. Do you put it like on the inside? Like if you were going to put it on a pair of jeans, would you put it on like where the normal label of the jeans is maybe? Yeah. Or, or you know, on the inside of one of the legs, the cuffs down by the bottom or something where it's maybe not going to get rubbed too much. I don't know. Okay. Um, Craig Brockmiller just said, as long as the cat doesn't knock stuff off your table, you're all good. <laughs> <laughs> Cats are stinkers, man. <laughs> they are, and they're fun. Yeah. Um, Walter White Walker is asking the question that is, very difficult to answer. Should I stick with Galaxy or does Apple have better access? Ah, oh, Walter. Walter White. <laughs> First of all, I love your show, Breaking Bad. Um, that is the that's the debate that will rage throughout history, um, throughout time. So I've and made the answer several, is always depends, right? It depends. Yeah, I've made lots of videos on this. Um, my philosophy has always been and still is always that. It depends on your level of vision loss. Like, well, number one, um, I always say, look at budget. Budget, you know, if, if what can you afford? That's what you should get. Um, past that, if you are using visual enhancements like magnification, high contrast, large print, color contrast, that sort of thing, I always recommend Android because Android generally has uh, better screens. They are more contrasty, better colors than iOS screens. Um, Samsung, especially Samsung has the best screens currently. Um, and because Android is customizable, you can make things bigger. You can make, you know, um, icons bigger. You can make your widgets much bigger. You have a lot more flexibility with customization, but if you also the, I, I still stand firm and think the, magnifier on the uh, on Android works better than on iOS. But if you need text to speech, um, then I recommend iPhones. Uh, they 
voiceover still just works better than talk back in most situations. Um, you know, talk back is great, but voiceover still just outperforms talk back. Okay. Um, Ricky May said, I'm on Prince Edward Island in Canada. Ah. So it's not a U.S. library, which I, yes. I, I have a feeling most U.S. libraries do not have that. So. Yeah. Um, Javier Diaz is on the channel, said hello. Oh, Javier is a member too. Thank you, sir. Um, Craig said, can I ask about the telescoping cane? I'm trying to find a replacement roller tip. I tried going through Ambutech, but I can't find the right size. Any other suggestions? The tele is it the if it's a telescopic cane that I recently did a video about, um, it's a screw on cane or screw on tip, and there wasn't any compatible tips that I know I know of. Um, the company that sells the cane doesn't have any. Uh, you may be able to find the same screw size or you know threading size or whatever that's called and make something work, but I don't think there's anything officially that will fit. Um, I did see someone, someone left a comment saying they used a slip on tip and just slipped it on to the end of it. But when you do that, you can't fully collapse the cane down. Uh, that last section kind of sticks out a little bit. So you just got to keep that in mind as well. I wonder if you tried to force it down, if it would pop the tip right off. <laughs> it probably would, you know, and I, I, I even thought about just going to like Lowe's or Home Depot or something and trying to find a big bolt that had the same screw, the same thread pattern and just screw that into the bottom. So you had at least something more durable. The, the, the tip that comes on that telescopic cane isn't great. Mm -hmm. And Walter White Walker said it's actually two shows, Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones. Oh yeah. The Walker. Yeah. He's a Walker. That's true. <laughs> He's a white walker. <laughs> I didn't even put that together. That is awesome. Okay. Um, and Walter said, the autocorrect on my galaxy seems to misspell words that are actually spelled correctly. So I threatened switching to Apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mike Wheeler said LSNS he thinks has a converter for screw on tips to convert it to a hook or slide on. Oh. So well, there you go. I have to look into that. Yeah. All right. I think I think I'm caught up on the comments in the live stream here. So we will go to what I believe is the last video for um yeah. to look at the comments on. And this is Mastering accessibility, iPhone and iPad setup for low vision users and updated tutorial. Because I guess it's probably been years since you did that last, huh? It was, yeah. And and that's the whole reason I put out an updated one is, is several people requested it. Um, you know, a lot of the information is the same. It's just kind of in a new area and maybe is worded differently. Um, but I figured might as well go ahead and put out an updated one. Okay, so let's see. Do you like my AI, my chat GPT generated title? Mastering accessibility. <laughs> oh, is that what that is? I, I didn't know. Yeah. I mean, it's it's good. Yeah, you hopefully. seem to like the video. <laughs> um, John Clay, Claybaugh, 9536 said, I've never been this early, but I don't have an iPhone. And that's fine. Not every video is helpful to me. I still love your channel. <laughs> it was nice. <laughs> I know. I appreciate that. Yeah. They're not all going to be winners, but you know. <laughs> um, and Merrick298 said, is there a similar setup for Android? Yes, there is. So I have done that in the past as well. Um, and uh, I need to do an updated version of that as also. The, the main problem is that what, what, you know, the one thing I love so much about Android is also the one thing that drives me crazy is, is that, you know, um, Android, you can do whatever you want to on Android. It's, it's so customizable, but that also means that everybody's Android is different. Um, and, you know, my Samsung, the settings on my Samsung are going to be slightly different than the settings on your Google Pixel, Rachel. Right. So even though it's it has the same stuff, um, 
finding it could be different. For, yeah, for the most part, uh, or it might be named different things, you know, so it's a little bit more difficult to do one of these types of videos for Android, but I will definitely uh, do an updated one coming out sometime in the future. What I would recommend is you can just kind of use the same tips and things that I talk about in this video and apply that to your Android as well. A lot of the things, you know, doing the dark background, um, setting your text bigger, all of those things will apply exactly the same. Okay. Um, and David, I'm sorry, Davida, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to say this. It's like, I think it's a name, but it's all smushed in together. It's hard to tell where one word begins, the other one ends. So not right. gonna try, I don't want to butcher it. So says, I would really appreciate it if you could go a little slower and go into a little bit more detail about each feature because some of the features are pretty scary to me because I don't know what they mean. And I've had a few scares trying to find out how to undo the mess I created. I was trying to follow along with you, but I couldn't keep up. Yeah, well, first I would say, try not to be scared. Nothing nothing to be scared about. Um, you're really not going to do any big damage, you know, or anything harmful. Um, you know, and if something, if you if you change something and it doesn't look right or doesn't work for you, just change it back. Um, but it's kind of difficult. You know, someone else mentioned this later on, I think, about that I was going too quickly or something. But the thing is, you know, I don't want it to be boring. I don't want to take too much time on, spend too much time on something because then people, you know, aren't going to want to stay tuned, I guess, or aren't going to want to follow along. Um, so what I always recommend is just, just pause it. You can always pause the video, do the thing that I'm talking about and then play again or, you know, watch it and then come back and watch it again. Um, I try to spend a little bit of time explaining each thing that I, that I felt needed explanation, but I, at the same time, I didn't want to kind of overly explain and, and uh, spend too much time on it. So it's, 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 it's kind of a balancing when making videos like this. Yeah. And then um, somebody else had responded to that comment and said, you can also set the playback speed to be a lower setting and that might help. Yeah. Yeah. Which is true. Cause I often listen to things, watch things at a faster speed, but if you really want to be able to, you know, follow along, slow it down. Yeah. And if you're, if you're watching, I always watch on my computer uh, because if you hit the space bar, the space bar pauses. So uh, it's really easy to, as you're watching, just tap that space bar and then you can do the thing on your phone or your, your tablet and then tap the space bar to continue. And you can use the arrows to jump forwards or backwards like 20 or 30 seconds. So you can hit the space bar and if you need to go back, just tap that left arrow a couple times and then it jumps you back. It's like doing a, a rewind. Okay, and then the last one is the word. <laughs> it says, I have a problem with browsers. It doesn't seem to matter which browser I'm using, whether it's Safari or Firefox. Neither one of them use dark mode, even if I set them that way. Do you have any input on that? Yeah, so there are, um, that's very common. Um, and I run into that on the computer a lot. Uh, there are extensions you can get that will force things to be in dark mode if they don't automatically come in dark mode. Yeah. But um, so you can look into that. I've done videos about Google Chrome showing extensions for that kind of thing. Um, but you can also, if you have the back tap uh, function on your device, and I talk about back tap in the video, you can set up a quick shortcut to quickly invert the screen. So if you are in a browser and you jump into a website that is not, doesn't, invert like you want it to, you can quickly, you know, double tap on the back of your phone or whatever, and it will invert. And then while you're in that, that web page, and then when you're done, just double tap again, and it goes back to normal. Uh, well, and, and Ricky May is the word. Ah, Ricky May is the word. <laughs> uh, that's a very quick, easy way to do that on, on a, on a computer. I've made videos on, on how to set up a keyboard shortcut to do that exact same thing, quickly inverting your screen, because it's very common. You run into something that's not, uh, inverted like you want it to. You can quickly just hit the keyboard command and invert your screen. Okay. Walter White Walker gave you a super chat, super generous, very, oh, thank you. very nice. 
Um, it said currently on SS disability, any ideas on work from home part-time income? I don't really know. I mean, there, there are nothing specific. There are op, uh, jobs out there for that kind of thing. I know, I know several people that work from home doing stuff like that. Um, customer service or, or doing calls. Um, yeah, I, I work with your, your state's voc rehab to see if they have any options for that sort of thing. Yeah. Cause you never really did anything working from home until you started your YouTube stuff. No, not before that. No. Okay. Now I want to watch game of Thrones again. <laughs> Thinking about the white walkers. Just what you need is to start a new series. <laughs> I know. I just <laughs> finished Korra, the the, the um, Legend of Korra on Netflix. Love that show. <laughs> Great audio description on that show too. If anybody's interested, we were talking about so yesterday. So Skylar was watching Korra, but they weren't at the same place. She she was behind where Sam was, but um, Sam was hanging out downstairs with us and he was sitting on the couch so he couldn't see anything. And, you know, you with Cora, a lot of it's visual. Um, yeah. And we were just talking about how we really need a device that connects via, I don't know, Bluetooth, whatever that is on, you know, has an earbud as part of it so that Sam could get the audio description but the rest of us wouldn't have to listen to the audio description because if you don't need the audio description it's actually super annoying <laughs> and i feel bad but it is it is no, i mean it's fine. to be honest it is yeah that's a legit that's a legit statement <laughs> so it would just be super nice if sam could sit on the couch with us and watch whatever we're watching but have the the um i mean basically the same thing they have at the movie theaters yeah they do i mean they do have there's apps that will um, give you the audio description for what you're watching. Um, but but yeah, for what you're th what you're talking about, just a simple way to stream just the audio description right into a headset um, for the home use. Exactly what you have at the movie theater just for home use. Yeah. Um, Double Aaron, thank you for the super chat. Um, he has a question and it's very broad, so we're going to need more information from you for sure. But he says, what is the best device for completely blind? My son is 14 years old. And I think the first question to that is um, for what tasks, right? Right. There's there's a lot of devices out there and they're, the goal of the different devices isn't the same. So, you know, what specifically is he trying to do that he's struggling with? And then Sam might be able to help guide you to at least a family of of devices or something that might help with that. So yeah, put that yeah. in the chat here so we can, we can try to help answer that. Yeah. Um, oh, Walter White Walker. It sounds like you and Walter have the same taste in shows, Sam. He just All said, right. if you have Hulu or Disney, Shogun, which is all subtitles, has a dubbed version under extra. Still a few subtitles, but the series is fantastic. Yes. I watched the whole thing as soon as it came out. I'm a huge uh, like medieval Japanese samurai. I love it. I've got several swords myself. Um, so I, I, I was all over that, that show when it first launched and it was really good. I was upset that it was only a couple episodes. I'm like, nah, come on. We need more, more Shogun. It was awesome. Okay. Um, so double Aaron he, he was asking about the bikes for totally blind. He said for reading and for getting around. Um, so for reading, you know, there's there's either audio or there's Braille. For someone that's totally blind, there's either audio or Braille. Um, for audio, you know, National Library Services for the Blind, the Talking Books Program, they also have Braille as well. For Braille, I mean, it's really, there's tons of different Braille devices out there. It kind of depends on, you know, um, the extra features as far as what your son would need for school and that sort of thing. Um, we can, you know, I'm happy to, if you want to send me an email, I'm happy to kind of dive a little deeper into that for you. Uh, for navigation, there are, same thing. Are you, are we looking at an app or something like that? Are we looking for mobility, like a cane, you know? Um, 
there's 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 lots of great applications. Is uh, is he a Android or an I iOS user? Um, I'm sure people in the in the chat would offer some suggestions as well. Yeah, there. Craig said he would recommend iPhone for completely blind users if if the phone is what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then what what or the peripheral system that he uses is is he already you know using a mac then definitely just stick with the ios um if he's using a pc then you know i would still probably recommend an iphone for a totally blind just like i said before the um voiceover aspect but um you know you might need to use some other methods for connecting the two like i have to use a program called simple transfer to get all of my videos and photos and stuff off my iphone onto my windows computer and it works great you know um i didn't want to deal with going through like itunes and figuring it all out and sometimes they don't work well together on windows so you know you might have to be a little resourceful with that okay um daisy lopez monteroso said i happened to get on the magnifier app by accident but I did notice a ton of new features. Have you heard of the pointer to read text on the magnifier app on iOS? She said this was on my iPad Pro, by the way. Sam? Yes, yeah, with, with <laughs> uh, sorry, my computer turned off there for a second. Oh. <laughs> um, yes, the, uh, so I missed the, the middle of that, but I think I got the gist of it. Um, yeah, with, with some of the latest updates, 17, um, iOS 17, they've added in some new stuff. There, there are a lot of really cool new features um, in the Magnifier app. I need to do a full video because then if you have one of these devices like my 12 Pro Max with the LiDAR, there's some even, even more cool extra um, new tools in the Magnifying app. Carrie on Accessibility just joined us. Hello, Carrie. Carrie's here. Um... Basil Carrie. asked, do you still use um, Lookout? I don't use it too often, no. Um, I If I'm going to, now that now that Seeing AI is on Android, if I, if I need something like that, I'll usually go for Seeing AI. Um, Lookout's, Lookout's great, though. Lookout, you know, has some stuff that is unique and um, still works fine, but I think... And and Carrie can kind of jump in on this as well. I, she, just said, about it. she just said seeing AI all the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if if you have if you have the two, and they're both free, so there's no reason why you shouldn't have the two. I I would go with seeing AI. Yeah, Smooth Keys um, just asked if there's any more apps for the blind and visually impaired. And again, you'd have to. There's a lot of apps, a lot. Yeah. So you have to specify like for what for what purpose? Because yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Someone just asked if I could speak more slowly, and I will try. I am a I am a fast speaker. I apologize. <laughs> um, so, uh, smooth keys. If you put more specifically apps for what purpose, Sam might be able to. Yeah. Give you some ideas. Yeah, apps for reading text, apps for navigation, apps for um, what? Yeah, whatever. Okay, Hawaiian50 says, do you have any suggestions on games for the blind that are compatible with voice speech? You, 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 you're not really up on that, are you? No, no, no more than than just kind of the the common stuff that we all know about. If there's um, someone, if there's someone in here um, that does know about that, pop it in the chat. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming you're talking about mobile games. There are a ton of blind friendly games. There's like blindfold games. There's um, uh, I just I have a game that these people wanted me to check it out and i never actually got around to it just because i was too busy um i'll have to see if i can figure out what it was called legend i think is what it's called something like that that's miss willow
Okay, yeah, she was begging me to be put up on the chair, and then when I did it, she acted like I was hurting her. Uh, um, Evidence 11, that's a game that they, um, yeah, they want, want, I never got to play it. I've got it on my phone, but I never, I haven't played it, but it's, it's supposed to be a, like a murder mystery, um, but it's all audio. Okay, Smooth Keys 793 said, Hey Sam, is there any audio description video apps that I can try? I'm not aware of audio description apps, are you? Audio description video apps? Um, well, I mean, like, you know, all of the main ones, Netflix, Hulu, all of those have audio description. I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about or not. Um, there are, or at least there have been in the past, apps that will give you audio description for movies and things uh mike wheeler if he's still in here can talk about this there used to be a disney one where you would play the disney movie and the app would listen to it and it would sync up the audio description for the movie so like you're watching the movie on your tv and you've got your smartphone um i don't know if that's still around or not um there's a there's an audio description database. Hey gosh, I'm drawing a blank today. If anybody <laughs> knows what it's called, it's, it's a website. It's a, like a repository of, of all audio description information. I'm Googling. Yeah, I got a little bit of a headache and it's clouding my brain today. <laughs> we stayed up <laughs> way too late last night. Um, Javier said, Sam, that if this is, I think this is going back to us um, talking about you being able to listen to audio description separately. Mm -hmm. And he said uh, a fix would be if you have Apple TV on your big TV, do share play with your iPhone and run the audio description just through the iPhone. I, I, yeah. I thought about to... something like that, yes, um, as a potential workaround to that problem. You have Apple TV upstairs, right? Yeah, it's up here. We don't We don't use it in our main TV. Uh, Mainly because I hate the remote so much. <laughs> yeah, it's we got the old remote. Um, mm -hmm. But no, yeah, it just needs some kind of simple solution. That, that is a workaround. You're right, Javier. Um, but some just a simple solution is what we're looking for here. I need to talk to Roku or Fire, Amazon. Let's talk to Amazon. Yeah. Call up Amazon, baby. <laughs> yeah. We have that kind of in. Yeah. Um, several people mentioned the Blind Legend as a game. Is that the game you were talking about? Yes, that's yeah. I mentioned okay. Legend, the Blind Legend. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was also my nickname in college, by the way. Um, Walter said, "God of War and The Last of Us Two have great access features for visually impaired." Yeah, so yeah, if you're looking for just an like an accessible video game, console video game or computer video game, yeah, God of War Ragnarok and The Last of Us Part Two, those are being touted as the most accessible games ever made. Um, you can, I mean, there's videos of totally blind people going through the entire Last of Us Part Two video uh, game by themselves independently. And there's some racing games. Um, I'm not a racing game person. Forza, is it Forza? Is that the name of the game? Um, that apparently you can customize it to where you can set it up um, to where blind people can can do the racing games as well. Okay. And I know, okay. I just also mentioned, I know a lot of people that play um, fighting games because, you know, every single move has a sound that it's accompanied, accompanies the move. So there's, 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 I've seen totally blind people doing like Street Fighter and they just memorize what all the different sounds are and they play it just by audio and are very competitive. Hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so several people said the audio description thing is audio vault. Um, okay. Just FYI, when I Googled it, there's actually several things. There's a ACB has the audio description project. Which That's what I was thinking of. Okay, yeah. it maintains a list of described DVDs, broadcast television, movies, performing arts, museums, national parks, and everything um, on their website. 
And then there's the Library of Congress has audio description resource guide. Organization providing audio description services for NBC, CBS, Discovery Channel, Viacom channels, blah, 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 blah. So looks like there's a couple of different things available to take a look at. Yeah. Um, a Kodak cam is wanting to know if you know when the eSight Go is coming out and if you know what the price is. Um, it is out very, very soon, if not already. They, um, they, I saw it at ATIA. They were showing it off back in, in January, February. Um, and they will have it at CSUN. I think they're going to be giving me mine at CSUN, um, not to keep just to make a video. So I will have a, yeah, end of March is when I'm supposed to be getting mine. So, um, I will be doing a full video. I don't know the price, unfortunately. Uh, I saw a prototype at ATIA 2022. So a full year, year ago, I saw the prototype in person and um, I was impressed. It's, it's, they're changing it up. I don't know if you, if you ever saw that eSight go f or eSight 4. Uh, it had this kind of uh, weird, I'll say, halo thing um, design. I didn't mind it. it. It barely fit my big head, but um, they're going with a much more streamlined, just glasses, sunglasses kind of look. The battery is in this yoke neck thing that you you wear around your neck. So that's that's a little um, odd, maybe interesting decision. Um, kind of a workaround to get a nice big battery. But anyway, uh, it's it's. I was impressed with the new design and although it still doesn't work for me, eSight has never worked for me. I will say it worked the best out of any of the eSights I've ever tried. And that was just a prototype. So I'm looking forward to getting the actual finished unit. Uh, okay. I think that we have, Got everything, been on here for about an hour and 15 minutes, so it might be time to wrap it up. Yep, let's do our, our talk about our giveaway. Oh, yeah. And, yep, um, and I'm giving away two things again, two different things this time. So I have, uh, the first thing is I have a very simple slate and stylus. Uh, brand new, in the bag, never been used here. If you're familiar with what a slate and stylus is, it's a it's it's kind of a way to write Braille um, on the go, and it's also a great way to practice Braille. This is usually what they give you when you're learning how to do Braille. Um, so if you need a portable like a way to take Braille notes <laughs> on the go, uh, this is a perfect thing for that. So a slate and stylus. Um, and then I'm also giving away a little sample pack of way around tags, the way tags. So, um, what we were talking about earlier with the pen friend and creating labels, customizable labels, way around is essentially the same thing, but it uses these special tags and you use an app on your phone. Uh, so your phone has to be able to read an NFC label, uh, which most modern phones can. Um, and I will be giving away a sample of these, just a little sample pack. So if you are interested in winning either of these items, definitely let me know what you need to do. As always, don't leave a comment on the live stream itself. Come back later after we're done and watch the live stream and leave a comment on that video. Yeah. And and the comment is, if you want the way around tags, leave the comment tags, T-A-G-S. Um, or if you want the Braille uh, slate and stylus, then just leave the word Braille in your comment. And that's how we will choose the winner. Um, what about international? Uh We'll say for U.S. and Europe. Okay. And, uh, and Canada? 
yeah, like yeah, yeah. North, North America and Europe, or yeah, North North America and Europe. Sorry, yes. Okay. And I'm sorry for the others. It's just shipping gets insane. Yeah. Insane, insane. Um, yeah. yeah, actually, someone, I think someone, way up at the beginning of the chat mentioned. Did you guys talk about way around at your lap during your last um, members only? Possibly. I'm not sure. I think someone said they got some after that, but I could be. Okay. Yeah. I could be making that up. <laughs> <laughs> she does make up things quite often. Um, no, I, actually, it was it was Ty Rocky said I just got a pack of way around stickers after we talked about them on our members only Zoom call. I really like them. Oh, okay, good. Well, then Ty is exempt from the contest. <laughs> <laughs> he, he might need more. <laughs> and I think uh, Mike Wheeler said he uses them as well. Yeah, they're they're pretty handy. Uh, I've done videos about them. So the company is called Way Around, and these are the these are called Way Tags. So if you're not have no idea what I'm talking about, jump on YouTube and search for Way Around um, or Way Tags, and you can find my videos there. Essentially, does the same as the Pin Friend, just a different different uh, company. No. Why do you have tweezers? I, you know, I fiddle. I, these are, <laughs> these. Are, <laughs> leave me alone. These are the um the accessible tweezers that I got from CVS that they sent me. These, you know, that accessible yeah, uh, beauty care, healthcare products. And I don't know why they've just been sitting on my desk this whole time. And so I, I, I like to fiddle with them. I need a fidget toy is what I need. Daisy's asking what's so funny. It's just, it's funny to me. Sam's sitting there messing around with a pair of tweezers. I'm like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Mike said, watch out, Rachel. He's going to come for eyebrows. <laughs> no, that's Skylar. Skylar does that. She, she loves yanking um, her eyebrows out. Wendy, the way around is, w, it's W-A-Y, right, Sam? W-A-Y yes. and then around? Yep. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Way around. Yeah. And, and way tags. So once again, the code name for the way tags is tags, T-A-G-S. That just needs to be in your comments somewhere. And the code word, uh, not code name, code word for the Braille slate and stylus is Braille. Just put that in your comments somewhere if you're interested in winning either of those. And we will do our best. I will do my best. Uh, I only have one more big trip in March, so I, I should be back in a couple of weeks to announce um, the winner, and I will either announce it in a separate video or in our next talk back video. Um, as always, I will never send you a message or announce in a comment that you have won a contest and you need to send me money. That is that is not me. That is a that is a scam. I will never ask for money if you are if you win a prize from me. It is always one hundred percent free. So don't don't send anybody any money. <laughs> yeah, Sam is never going to send someone a message asking for money. No, nope. no. Period. Not about a, a prize or anything else. On that note, if you want to be a member, <laughs> <laughs> send me money. No. <laughs> No, but honestly, if you if you would like to be a member and join us for our monthly Zoom calls and things like that, then that information is down below. But I try to make it as affordable as possible. Um, Ty also had a good point. If your phone doesn't have an M NFC tag reader or if like the pen friend, you would prefer not to use your phone. They do have the AwayLink scanner that you can buy separately and then you connect it to the app and you can read tags. Yes. Although I guess right. if you're connecting it to your app, then you probably still have to have to use your phone, right? Uh, no, not necessarily. So I have the actual scanner here, and it has a little one of these cool little retractable belt clips, like you always see the the janitors using their with their keys. Um, and it's just it gives you great joy, doesn't it? I do. I love that. I need to fiddle with that here. <laughs> um, makes too much noise though. So, and it's about the size of like a business card. It's a little bit thicker. Uh, it's like about as thick as half a deck of cards and about a size of a business card. That's, that's the, the scanner that you can get as an extra accessory, but, uh, most people would just use their, the app on the phone. 
And I can I can tell you that the monthly members only Zoom meetings must be a lot of fun because we have to drag Sam off of them every month. <laughs> I do. <laughs> they go long. They're, they're supposed. I think they're technically supposed to be about an hour, but they're usually two. Yeah, at least at least two hours. <laughs> we get to talking. We get some good conversations going. I know. I don't want to wrap it up. Yeah, you always come down and be like, oh, "That was a good one." Yeah, it was a good conversation. <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, Ricky May said that said I have a mini slinky mini slinky that I fiddle with when I'm doing my radio show on Saturday nights, which I could totally see you doing too, Sam. Yes. Yeah. If it some of the the fidget tool toys they make noise though. That's the thing. I I need something I can fidget with that's quiet. Yeah. Oh well. All um, right, everybody. I think we will wrap it up there. Thank you all for joining us. It's been fun. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. And once again, um, CSUN coming up next week. If you're in the Anaheim area, I will be there. Look forward to seeing people there. Um, stay tuned for more videos about that kind of thing. Um, updates about that. Also, oh, oh it's so heavy. Video coming out about the uh, Cloverbook Pro XL. Huge thank you to Irie AT for sending this to me to make a video. Um, really excited about this. The Cloverbook Pro was my favorite portable video magnifier ever. And this is the XL, the big, big daddy, um, big brother of that. So I'm looking forward to doing a full review of that coming out soon too. So stay tuned. All right. that that is it, guys. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your March. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Drink responsibly. And uh, <laughs> we'll see you next next uh, next month for the next talk back. See ya. Bye, everybody. The live stream is over. Thank you for watching.